Hi, welcome to 2011 Studies. Um, I'm recording this on uh, January 31st, which is the uh, the event of the blood moon. It, what is it? It's a super moon, it's a blue moon, and it's a blood moon all in one day. Um, I think it's been over 150 years since that's happened. Is this significant in ushering in the day of the Lord in uh, Pentecost, May 20th, uh, 2018. I say that too because I hesitated because it could be at the time of the cross begins the day of the Lord and then it continues on right up till uh, Pentecost and into uh, the Feast of Tabernacles in 2018. Um, there's evidence obviously in the Bible uh, according to what was mentioned in Acts that when they accused them of being drunk they Peter stood up and said no these men aren't drunk this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel you go back to Joel 2 and you realize the day of the Lord's mentioned there and all these events uh, including the moon turning to blood and the sun being darkened there was an eclipse last year um, and this uh, full moon, blood moon, uh, super moon, blue moon. <laughs> it's just like all at one time, all in one um, one day. And there's good pictures up online if you want to check it out. All I know is when I woke up uh, early in the morning it was illuminated outside and it looked like it looked like morning was coming but it, it was just the moon. Um, so I wanted to go over some stuff we covered before on the 1335 days. And I, I don't mean to be doing this to rehash stuff over and over again, but some of this information is really important as far as finding little bits here and there as you study. Um, now there's still people who are teaching No More Salvation, um, E-Bible Fellowship is, um, there's a couple other people, E.J. E. Hoffman, um, they're teaching that salvation ended May 21st, uh, 2011. Um, they adapted this uh, day of judgment type of thing scenario, but I, you, the problem is with that whole thing is if you don't understand 2 Peter 3, if you don't understand 2 Peter 3, you're not going to understand how God is long-suffering for the sake of salvation. This is what Peter pointed us to Paul's writings to let us know that this is all about salvation. This is why God is long-suffering. And the only other time really that was mentioned before, um, before the destruction of the present world or the old world was the time of the flood. The earth was corrupt. Uh, violence filled the earth. And um, God said no more. And that's, that's basically the time that he waited while the ark was building. And I wanted to touch a little bit on that because that's pretty fascinating too. If for some reason, for some reason, that the seven years is extended um, to ten years, it could be, and I say that hesitantly because I don't want to be saying something that where it takes the focus off people repenting and turning to the Lord during the, this time of, um, you know, approaching the day of the Lord. But there was, there was, from the time Noah uh, was uh, 500 years old to the time he entered the ark at 600 years old, there appears to be a hundred year span uh, in the time of building the ark. Was that uh, considered the time of God's long suffering while the ark was being prepared? Um, you can't really hone in on that except to say 10 years if you're going to say you know the, the revelation speaks of uh, you will have tribulation 10 days well it doesn't make sense if that's only 10 days because what is that now he's a, he was uh, talking to a church in the book of revelation you have experience you will have tribulation 10 days the number 10 is there now you can either look at that as a number of completeness which could be the time of the Great Tribulation, um, or just as a number of completeness, in other words, not a literal 10 should be applied. But in Noah's case, you had you had a hundred years there. Uh, that God waited while the ark was being prepared. Uh, God's long suffering. Is that similar to the end, where there could be from... Uh, say 2011 to uh, 2021. 
Could that be the 10 year um, span of time? You'll have tribulation 10 days, which would be a, a day for the year principle. And it just so happens too, um, where God had mentioned in the Bible that he set a limit on man, his, his numbers of years would be 120. And some people try to apply that to the time that Noah's building the ark, but I don't think that applies. I think only the 100 years applies. Um, because it mentions his age, and then it mentions the time he was 600 years old when he entered the ark. And something may have changed there when God allowed man to live on earth for a certain amount of time, and it could be the, the, the cutoff point is 120 years. Of course, with everything going around today, it's like people don't live that long. I mean, the oxygen levels alone, I mean, so many different things uh, have to do with how, how long you know the body decays and all that as you're living but it happens to be that 10 years is also uh, 120 months so that aspect of it is like well is God allowing for more time past the the seven years um, again I say that hesitantly because I don't want anybody to think hey we still have more time, no need to worry about anything that's coming. I think we are approaching the day of the Lord in 2018. Um, I mentioned this in the 2014 release of uh, Seven Years to a Better Tomorrow, 2011 to 2018. Um, you know, at that time I was thinking on the lines of there's seven years, is God going to do it in the midway point in 2015? The more we study this, and some of the stuff I want to cover today, is the reason... Um, Whenever you have a year, whenever you have one single year, the day of the Lord uh, has to end on Pentecost since they, when at least that in 33 AD, that's the way it happened. And so every other year after that, um, to fulfill the day of the Lord, you would have to have Pentecost involved. That's what I want to say. Now, whether it's from the start of the anniversary of the cross to Pentecost onward, because many were added to the church um, after Pentecost, um, and 3,000 were saved, in, about 3,000 were saved in one day at Pentecost. So you have this whole idea of salvation there, but you also very much so have the language of judgment. And, you know, how long will this judgment period, this day of the Lord, you know, go on? Uh, from all I can understand, that it seems if 2018 is the year, which I believe it is, it seems like it could be from Pentecost, the four-month period from Pentecost, right up into October of uh, <clears throat> 2018, October 1st which is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, I ran some numbers before, and it, for instance, today, uh, the blood moon, until May 20th, 2018, which is Pentecost, is 110 days. The factors show the number 11. And you know, when you go into the 77 generations of Christ, the number 11 is featured, you have some examples of the Lord being related to uh, the number 11. And from today, the blood moon, until um, uh, May 20th, which, which is the end of the seven years of Great Tribulation, it is the beginning um, of the four months in between the time of Pentecost until um, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's also the conclusion of the 1335. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1335th day. Okay, so we have that. We have that. Now, when we were studying this earlier, a couple months back, um, by the way, I, I meant to get up a recording um, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> what happens is... <laughs> I, I use a box fan when I sleep. It helps me sleep. Just that white noise helps me sleep. It drowns, the, you know, the TV, anything else out, it drowns out. Can't hear a thing. I go to sleep. But sometimes when it's on, I've gotten so used to it that I'll sit there and do a, a whole study, like an hour study, and then 
what happens is uh, I go back to edit it and I go, what's that noise? <laughs> and I go, oh my gosh, the fan was on all that time. So I had to scrap a study and it was pretty long. I've got, I still have to redo it. Um, it's about 20 pages long. And uh, that's all about he will finish the work. So that's gonna follow this study. Um, but, I, so if you, know, if you need to sleep, box fans are great, but just don't use them when you're recording music or when you're recording, I don't know how many times I've done that too. I gotta, I, it's almost like I have to put a big sign and big poster up saying, turn off the fan, idiot. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we posted studies on the, um, 1335 the pattern of the 1335 now you give credit where credit due mr camping did an excellent job on this he he showed how from trumpets when the time that john was introduced uh, or introduced christ rather with the time john the baptist introduced christ until uh, you go to the cross and then you go to pentecost uh, in 33 a.d so that's 29 a.d when he was introduced until 33 AD, you have a period, that period of three and a half years. You also have the 1335. Now, blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1335. Well, what happened? What happened? Like I said earlier, about 3,000 were saved in one day, and then many were added to the church afterward. It was a great time of salvation. And since many nations were represented during that time, I believe that's a grand picture of what's going to happen worldwide as we approach um, Pentecost this year. When we hit that date and onward into the months leading up to uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, um, which the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles is related to the great cry of salvation. You know, if you thirst, if you thirst, come unto me. And... Uh, the very one of the last messages that Christ had in the book of Revelation was that same thing. It was, you know, if any man thirsts, let him come up and drink the living waters. So the idea of no salvation is just so foreign to the Bible. But we've learned <clears throat> through study that there's an attack on the Holy Covenant. This attack on the Holy Covenant is a dangerous teaching that there's no more salvation. And Satan is behind it. And he comes with flatteries to... Uh, you know, as people, like, for instance, they're teaching no more salvation, and other people come up and, you know, flatter them with, oh, you're right about that. You're, we're, we're in the day of judgment now. Where there's no more salvation. There's an encouragement of flatteries going on to which the teachers think, oh, see, we're right on this. But that's just the way Satan has set it up. That's just the way the whole thing, is, uh, the attack on the Holy Covenant is happening. <clears throat> so anyway, now... There's people who have taken this seven years and turned it into a time of no more salvation right up until Christ comes from May 21, 2011 um, at the 7,000 year anniversary of the, of the flood and said, God's wrapped it up. No more. You, you missed the boat. Well, <clears throat> if people would study Second Peter 3, they would know that God's long-suffering um, is enduring during this time and this is what Paul's writings were all about and I'll touch a little bit on that again and he will finish the work but the the original pattern of 1335 again it has to be in any one given year from trumpets to Pentecost um, well any you know any three given years because that's that's the time span of three three point five or that's the time span of three and a half years um, any any uh, idea of the thirteen thirty five has to have it start at trumpets like it did in thirty uh, twenty nine a d and then end at uh, uh, Pentecost which ended in thirty three a d at time of the cross and then uh you know, 50 days later, that was Pentecost. Penta. So, <clears throat> we, no matter what time frame we use, it has to involve those two feast celebrations. Now, we had some type of a, a discrepancy with the 1334 days because it seemed uh, in 2014 to 2018, um, I did cover in the, the, the 2014 release of seven years to a better tomorrow I did cover the fact that you know the day of the Lord is very important didn't cover all the aspects of it because there's just too many scriptures to go over um, including the judgment on the fallen houses of God the uh, 
the judgment on the heathen, uh, as they have done, it shall return unto their own head. All these ideas about the day of the Lord. Um, and I think it it just wraps up at the end with uh, the coming of Christ. But the day of the Lord is a longer period of time. So as we posted on the island video studies that Trumpets 2014 to Pentecost 2018 is 1,334 days. And the very next day, following Pentecost, is 1335 days. Now there's something called, uh, Trumpets is Rosh Hashanah, okay? There's something called Erev Rosh Hashanah, which means, that's E-R-E-V, Rosh Hashanah, and that means the evening of, uh, right at the, you have that 6 o'clock mark when you're turning in from one day, according to the Hebrew calendar, to the next day. So you have that evening of Rosh Hashanah. Now that is <clears throat> one day before, where where did I put this? Okay, September 24th, uh, Erev Rosh Hashanah is the evening of Rosh Hashanah. Then you have September 25th and September 26th is the, uh, 25th is Tishri 1, Rosh Hashanah, New Year. September 26th is Tishri 2, Rosh Hashanah. New Year's Day too. So you have two days there, but you have an evening before it. Now when you use the evening date, September 24th, and it does come exactly, it lands right on Pentecost, right on the day of Pentecost. So that's the 1335. If you were to start it um, on the, the very day of September 25th, Tishri 1, Rosh Hashanah, then you have 1334 days on Pentecost, and then the very next day is the 1335. So I'm at this point <clears throat> thinking the importance of uh, these Hebrew celebrations, these feast days, beginning on, on sundown of the day before, or the evening before. Now, when did John um, announce Christ? I have to go back and study that more and look into there is something to do with one day and I I man it's it's like in the back of my mind but I can't remember it so I'm gonna have to go through and study that language again to try to pinpoint this down more but I think that's accurate so if we go from September 24 2018 which is the evening of uh, Rosh Hashanah or trumpets then we will come to the 1335 days um, on Sunday May 20th 2018 1,335 days. Um, or in other words, it's three years, seven months, and 27 days at the end date. Now you cannot, you cannot, you cannot possibly teach the 1,335 days with, without teaching salvation. You can't do it. In other words, why is there blessed is he who waits and comes to that period of time? the end of that period of time. Why? Because God's Word is wrapping up. He is finishing the work. The Logos will go out. He will finish the work and cut it short in what? Righteousness. That's what it's all about. Uh, there's, a, there's a verse that talks about, I'll have to post it, I'm trying to remember it. Um, something to do with righteousness and judgment. And it, those two things go hand in hand. Um, I have to look that up. I, I've already forgotten that. I just studied it the other night. But that's the whole thing about the day of the Lord, too. There's a dual application of righteousness being ushered, ushered in, and it has a lot to do with salvation, but it also has a lot to do with judgment. And we'll, we'll see in the next study, he will finish the work, how it relates to the uh, judgment on the fallen houses of God, but also the quote-unquote the heathen the unbelievers who who have done uh, persecution during this time so now God's gonna God could save people too like he saved the Apostle Paul you know the Saul of Tarsus you know he was persecuting the early church and God saved him there's there that is not out of the realm of how God operates because he can use somebody for his purposes and you know who knows so you might have enemies. Well, some of those enemies might become saved. I might have enemies. They might become saved. You don't know. 
we just don't know at this point how God is going to wrap up his salvation plan. Those who, those who weren't God's people all of a sudden are God's people. That's what the Bible proclaims. You know, um, and it's, it's so much information we're going to cover on the next study. It's a long study. This one's shorter. But I just wanted to prep it because he will finish the work. And some of this information is very, very promising for those who have not experienced salvation yet. Um, so we have salvation and judgment uh, as a highlight of the day of the Lord. We now can pinpoint 1335 to um, Irev, Rosh Hashanah, the, the evening before <clears throat> be the evening before Rosh Hashanah and start the countdown there. Now the main difference is when Christ was announced, here's the Lamb of God who's going to take away the sins of the world. And in that three and a half period of time, he went to the cross. He, he accomplished that work. The graves were open. Something great happened. This wasn't something that happened like, you know, in principle it did from the foundation of the world. This happened then. And the graves were open. All of a sudden, something changed. And then we get to Pentecost, and then God's Spirit starts saving people in a great way. And then many were added to the church after that. So this is very promising news. We're, we're 110 days out. And I'll post the, the factors of that, how that relates to Christ. The day of the Lord, and the number 11 is featured when we, we enter that period of time. Um, and right now, it's like, well, maybe I shouldn't have brought up the, the tribulation of 10 days because... I mean, this looks so locked in and so sealed, but I have to, if I come across something in study, I do want to present it. Maybe somebody can correct me and say, hey, you know, the 10 days has to do with this, and maybe you're, you're not seeing that yet. And that's fine if somebody wants to do that. Um, but that is an option um, if we so happen to pass Pentecost of 2018. Um, but everything that, you know, when God uses the term Great Tribulation, it does not have to do with an 8,400-day period. Nowhere does it have to do with an 8,400-day period ending in May 21, 2011. And people still use that as Great Tribulation. It only has to do, by all biblical standards, the time where Jacob went into Egypt under the care of his son Joseph. That was seven years of Great Tribulation, they went in and they found um, they found substance. So we have the 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 time period of um, of seven years, and we've matched that up in seven years to a better tomorrow from May twenty one, uh, two thousand eleven, until May twentieth, two thousand eighteen. So we have that time period that is very significant. It is very, very significant of seven years. And it just so happens that all this other information of the 1335, the end of the seven years, uh, blesses he who waits, all this other information is coming right into play in this year. Not to mention the month Adar. The month Adar is very significant when the Jews had victory over their enemies. Now, you know, anybody who studies the Bible knows how God uses his language. A, a true Jew is one who's circumcised by the heart. Um, the victory over the enemies of Esther has a lot to do with the end of time when, when the believers in Christ, uh, who are circumcised by the heart, have victory over their enemies. So we're approaching that, too, in this year. We haven't approached it yet. This is still January 31st. Um, what I'll do online at the end of this study, I'll, I'll post all the feast celebrations that apply to this year and how Adar is, relates to um, <clears throat> the Feast of uh, Purim, which has everything to do with the Book of Esther and how God reverses things. Adar, the word Adar meaning God is magnified. There's a magnification going on there. Um, then we have the anniversary of the cross. We have Pentecost, May 20th, 2018. We have... Uh, the time period which I believe many were added to the church when I say church I'm talking about those who are called out those who are called out of the world into the eternal church of Jesus Christ I'm not talking about the, the established buildings and, and uh, congregations I'm not talking about that I'm talking about the eternal church of Jesus Christ um, who God has granted eternal life so we have that we have the feast of um, uh, tabernacles, which happens in October, 
All these important feasts are just so important. Then we have the phrase, the year, the year of my redeemed. And some other phrases that God used, and he focuses it on a year. So it's important to see that 2018, um, and I kind of waited until the, the blood moon to present this, because I wanted to present the information on the, the days from the blood moon to Pentecost, and the days of the blood moon till um, uh, Tabernacles, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And before, you know, we could think that, okay, that could be a supernatural event when God, the timekeepers are taken out um, and then the sun's removed, the, the, the moon is turned to blood. But there's nothing saying that it happens like all in one day. It could happen like the way it's, it's happened. The eclipse of 2000, the, the, the solar eclipse of 2017, the blood moon on today, it could happen that way. Because in the book of Joel, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what it says when these events happen. Um, and an event like that can trigger somebody's thought process, saying, wow, is God doing something here? Is, you know, are we getting, and we look around the world and see everything that's going on, is God, is He getting ready to come back? You know, the Lord's getting ready to come back. And that could trigger, you know, God drawing people. And I think that's happening. I really do. Um, what else about the 1335? I think I covered it all. Oh, well, there's one thing. The, you know, when I'm mentioning the, the teachers of no more salvation, there's something about Pentecost that repeats twice. And I wanted to talk on that because... You know, will people finally, you know, admit that they were wrong about the May 21 t date and the, the time of judgment? Because if they're teaching no more salvation, you would think there would be something related to back in, in 29 to 33 AD. But there is something that I see that I think is super important. And I wanted to read this. Acts 2.1 And when the day of Pentecost was fully come... They were all with one accord in one place. Acts 2.46 And they continued daily with one accord. You, you think about that term, you think about all in one, the same mind, all agreement. With one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did, their, did they eat their meat with gladness and sing, singleness of heart. It was in accord. They were all in agreement. Praising God and having favor with the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. We haven't seen that yet. We haven't seen the believers all in one accord. Matter of fact, there's, there's some discord going on. And it's like, you have to let God's word, the patterns of God's word, be the illustration. Everybody who studies the Bible has to do that. You have the patterns of trumpets to to uh, Pentecost from 29 AD to 33 AD. Okay, we got to admit, Peter stood up and he, he proclaimed this is what's fulfilled in Joel, that that whole day of the Lord was happening then. But the day of the Lord, uh, it has more than one period of time. There's a conclusion to it um, at the end of time. So we're approaching this. We're approaching this. We're 110 days out. And that number 11 showing up there when I saw that today I said, "You know what? This is this is very significant. We're going to we're going to see and hopefully, you know, this is the time where all believers will be in one accord. They'll be in agreement. They'll be realizing no the God didn't end salvation in May 21, 2011 at the 7,000 year anniversary of the flood. He did not do it. The door was not shut. He, he allowed for this period of time so he endured with the vessels of wrath so that the vessels of, of, of grace can experience salvation. He uh, endured during this time for that reason. We endured during that time during the seven years for that purpose. So, to wrap this up, be looking, be praying for the coming day of the Lord. I think we're right on target. Um, 
if if it so happens that we pass that and nothing's happening, somebody asked me that and I said, I don't see how we can't see what is happening during the day of the Lord. I mean, the Bible has some stark reality to that period of time. It's a day of darkness. You know, it's it's a day of... But then again, if you're following the pattern of 33 AD, we have to say, hey, salvation's there too. Because 3,000 were saved, about 3,000 were saved in one day. So the, there's a the period of judgment, but there's also a period of uh, salvation. Be looking for it. Be praying for it. You know, share share with your friends that we might be approaching family and friends. We might be approaching the day of the Lord. We could be approaching that in 2018. Um, when I wrote Seven Years to a Better Tomorrow, I realized that a 400 plus book could not go into detail on a lot of stuff. You had there had to be a cutoff point where you said, "Okay, I can't have a 900 page book." <laughs> I I couldn't write that much because it was it's a grueling task to do a book. Um, that's why these videos are so great. You know, I yeah, I do take time in editing and all that, but still, it's n not even nothing compared to writing a book. But so much information was left out knowing that we are going to be doing these videos on the day of the Lord and so on. So we'll have time to cover this. And as we're getting closer and closer, um, you know, it's time to, to really amp it up and, and start, start looking at these studies and seeing how, how much of, of truth is that we're in this period of time where things are going to change. So we've entered the, we've entered the year, you know, um, that all these feast celebrations are, are going to happen. And uh, we have to be in tune to it. We have to be, you know, aware. That verse that talks about the day of the Lord will not overtake you as a thief. And now he's talking to believers there. You're children of the day. Don't be drunken in the, in the night. Um, you're not children of the night, you know. Time to be sober. Time to start praying and wake up. So until the next study, which is called He Will Finish the Work, um, you know, do some praying, do some uh, studying, and you might want to look up that phrase, finish the work, because it's only mentioned twice in God's Word. And that has to do with uh, Christ going to the cross, finishing uh, the work, and then um, at the end of time, the Lord finishing the Word, the Logos, the, the completing the... There's a difference there. And it's, it's still the same phrase, because that's the way they translated the words. But it's, it's, it's different at the end, because the Word of God has gone out for 2,000 years. The Gospel has gone out for 2,000 years. And it says, He will finish the work, the Word, at the end, and cut it short in righteousness. Same message we're getting from the book of Daniel how righteousness uh, will come in. So, we're approaching important times. I mean, this is something that's, you know, we've been waiting for this. And that one verse that talks about, you know, this is the Lord. We waited for Him. We waited for Him. That's what it's talking about. We're going to be excited about this. We're going to see some stuff happening. So next time, um, He will finish the work, and then we'll, we'll go from there as far as studies go. God bless you and continue to pray and study. Thank you.